Sounds good. Um, good morning. Uh, it is still morning. Yeah, great to see everybody here supporting uh, the Cougs this morning. Um, just a couple comments as we get started. Uh, first, I really want to express my appreciation to Pat Shun and his staff for the great job they did with our uh, basketball coaching search. Um, as you, many of you know, you've seen some things on social media, and that's, of course, where we all go for information these days. But uh, Pat reached out to some of the really, really successful coaches who've been part of the WSU family as we were going through the search process. Uh, I can remember distinctly uh, Pat uh, sent me a note uh, in the middle of the process, and he said, there's this article I need you to go read in The Athletic called Nerd Ball. And uh, after reading that, I said, man, this looks pretty cool, and this could fit uh, at WSU. And from there on, it was just a matter of getting in front of Kyle, hearing about his philosophy and what's important to him as a coach, how he wants to work with players, how he wants to represent the university, how he wants to build young men and be a great teacher here. Uh, and uh, it really moved forward from there. Um, one of the first steps, though, I think, as we look at building programs at WSU, uh, starts with getting the right head coaches in place. Uh, last year, we were so thankful to uh, be able to recruit Cami Etheridge, our women's basketball coaches here. This year, uh, adding to that, uh, bringing Kyle Smith and his family to WSU, that is step number one. I also want to make sure we reaffirm that we have a strong commitment to providing both uh, Cami and Kyle the resources that they need to build championship winning programs at WSU. Uh, there'll be lots of comments, I'm sure, about facilities and the types of things that we want to do for our basketball programs. But let me tell you, as we win, uh, as we continue to develop our players, uh, as we have uh, teams that you all as Cougs are proud of, uh, we're going to make sure that we put those resources in place so that we continue uh, to ensure that some of our other programs that we have out there, uh, women's uh, tennis, volleyball, football, uh, soccer, track and field, uh, that are already very competitive in the Pac-12 and are going to be positioned to win some championships, we want to do the same with men's and women's basketball. Um, I also think that it's important, and when uh, Kyle and I had a chance to visit as part of the interview process, one of the things that I believe is really important is that we don't build just a great team. We build a great program. And that means that it's going to sometimes take time. Uh, I'm impatient, like uh, every other university president. You want to win. You want to win immediately. Um, but what I want to make sure our coaches do know is that we're committed to helping them build that program. And sometimes that's going to take some extra time. And so what I'm going to ask everybody out there is there's two things we need. One, we need you to show up, and we need you to bring 100 of your closest friends. Uh, we need you to come to men's and women's basketball to be out there and to be supporting our student athletes and our coaches. And then we're also going to ask for patience. Uh, guess what? It takes time to do this and takes time to do it well. And I think it's really, really important that we focus on building a culture around our program here, something that all of us as student athletes, as faculty, staff, uh, and around the country can feel proud of. So uh, with that, I'm just thrilled to welcome Kyle and Katie Smith to Washington State University. And uh, now I'm going to ask uh, our nationally recognized award-winning athletic director, uh, Pat Chun, uh, to uh, also offer some uh, more substantive comments on basketball. So thank you, and as always, go Cougs. Okay. That, that, I'm, I'm sorry, that was pretty wimpy. Let's try one more time <laughs> on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon as well, and I echo the uh, Go Cougs. Um, thank you for everyone for making time uh, to join us uh, for this, for this uh, special day, a mo momentous occasion for us. Uh, before we formally introduce Coach Smith, uh, there are a couple of thank yous uh, that I want to uh, uh, share with some people that really impacted this process. Uh, first and foremost, the 2019-2020 Washington State men's basketball team, uh, they are not here because they are all in class. I actually invited them and Coach vetoed me. <laughs> so uh, it kind of shows you where our priorities are as a basketball program. But uh, we met uh, two weeks ago today. Uh, we talked about where we were at as a basketball program, where we needed to go, and more importantly, what it was going to take to get there. 
Uh, I asked them for patience. I made them a promise, like I do with all of our teams whenever we make a change, that uh, we're going to go find you the best coach possible that's going to help you develop to be the best person you're supposed to be, and in this instance, the best basketball player you're supposed to be. So I'm really excited to start this next chapter together uh, with those young men uh, as we try to stop uh, stop our recent history in college basketball and kind of get us where we used to be and wherever everyone in this room wants us to be. Uh, when you enter the market for a head coaching position at Washington State, you know when you're corner are two really specific uh, and critical assets. Uh, number one is um, the Skoog family, the, the people in this room, the people that support us all over this country uh, and, and especially in the state. Uh, when you have uh, one of the most loyal, passionate alums and fan bases in the entire world, that sells. Uh, there's not a coach that we talk to that doesn't know the passion and loyalty because they know if you have this type of passion and loyalty, you can do some wonderful things. Uh, secondly is leadership. Uh, uh, every coach we talk to, uh, Kyle's no different. When you walk into the room, uh, you know that this university is led by the best president in the country. Uh, and they also know that uh, uh, when you have that type of leadership, you can do some extraordinary things with your basketball program. So, uh, President Schultz, I appreciate your counsel, your advice, your willingness to change your schedule literally on a moment's notice uh, to help us find the right person. But uh, we appreciate everything you do for your, for your athletics program and your commitment to making sure we get this higher right. Uh, to do a, a search like this uh, with speed and confidentiality, it does take some extra assistance. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank some special friends, uh, John Jones, Eric Dillon, Dwayne Brelsford. Uh, their collective generosity allowed us to move through our process with speed and confidentiality. Uh, we have great friends at the Pullman uh, City School District. Uh, one of the type of people that we bring to our campus uh, care about that word family. And when you have people in the school district that drop everything uh, to answer some immediate questions about uh, getting family uh, acclimated and, uh, and settled on a campus, that's such a wonderful thing to have. Uh, I'd like to our, to our entire administrative team and the athletic program. Uh, I'm surrounded by selfless teammates, uh, people that I literally call and say, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, and they know basically I'm going to tell them what I need them to do uh, after, after they tell me what they don't have going on. But you have uh, everyone in this department is so wired and so committed to our basketball program, to our student athletes, uh, and to ensuring that uh, our basketball program is where it needs to be. But a special thank you to our, to our Deputy Athletic Director, Ann McCoy, who's not here. Uh, for those of you who don't know Ann, she's the conscious of our athletic department uh, and her other role is she she has made it her mission to refuse uh, basically uh, she is our insurance policy that I will screw this place up as bad as I will so but that is the, but we're lucky to have Ann because she knows our history uh, she loves this place and she knows better than anyone else what type of people have been successful here so today marks the next chapter in our men's basketball program uh, and in our next head coach we sought out someone with the DNA of every great head coach in the history of our great school uh, number one a great human being uh, when you call around and you ask people about Kyle Smith, they talk about him as a person uh, before they ever talk about him as a coach or the data analytics piece. Uh, he's a teacher, uh, someone who can recruit and de develop character and leadership. You look at all the great coaches here, they focus on that piece probably more than anything else. Uh, someone who values academics and the social development uh, of our young people, someone who can build and sustain a program, uh, a master coach, and in this instance, uh, an acumen for the game of basketball, an innovator, and probably the most important piece is uh, someone with a chip on their shoulder, someone that understands that our way may be different at Washington State, but when it all comes together, typically it's the best way to do things. In our very first phone call, Kyle Smith uh, made it clear to me that he was going to be our next head coach, uh, and he was actually ready to take over the job before he got off the phone. Uh, he's been called the smartest coach in college basketball. Uh, my favorite line is he's been called the human sheet code. Um, I actually told the team when I met with them that we're going to put him in the matrix because uh, all these numbers are going to slow down. Uh, the numbers are going to slow the game down for them. Uh, but now he will be able to be called the most, uh, I guess, significant description in your professional career. Uh, you're now a Coug, and that means that means the most to everybody here. So on behalf of Washington State University, it's my pleasure to welcome Katie back to your home state, uh, to welcome Rocco, Bo, and Luke to the Coug family, uh, and to introduce the 19th head coach in the history of our great institution, Kyle Smith. Kirk, have a jersey for you. Uh, 
Thank you, Pat. Um, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here. Um, you know, a lot of people say uh, Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. Let me tell you, Pullman is the friendliest place on earth. And I, I and I, I'm, I'm <laughs> now I have a cheat sheet because I know some people from Eastern Washington, and I consider Eastern Washington from Wenatchee to Pullman, just so you know. So, and it, and it is like one small town, to be honest, very much. You can maybe box out Spokane, but the rest of you are. But anyway, I want to I want to make some thank yous as well. Um, and I was just overwhelmed in this process with, uh, first of all, I've, I've had more conversations with uh, President Schultz, I call him Kirk though he tells me, than I had in any of, and I've had great presidents, don't get me wrong, but just, it's just a very affable, wonderful person. And um, I have a rule, when you meet someone, and you guys can all steal this, um, you meet someone and you like them, 90% of the time you're right. And I really felt that way, I was like, and there's a bond there, and we kind of connected, and we talked about making hires, and we talked about going from your gut, and, uh, you know, hopefully I'm right, think, think, think I'm right, but I just felt really positive, and, um, and be under that leadership, and just the way it's aligned, um, uh, just, it's a family, and with, and the same thing I felt, and Pat was just so uh, uh, professional about it, and yet he presented what this place is, and it's a, it's a family, um, and I, one, one thing that uh, in the process I were interviewing, I said, I'm a head coach, I'm a sitting team, I don't want to drag this thing out. I said, and he said, you can come up here and got to talk to him. I said, well, if I go up there and do a good job, are you going to give me, offer me the job? He said, no. And I said, I can trust this guy, truthfully. I said, I know I've been in that situation. It wasn't easy for him to say, yeah, we can do something. But he was going through the process and he, was, he had integrity about it. When he said, hey, I'm going to call you at this time, the call came around the button, and that's really, really maybe the most important thing when you take a job is to work with people you really trust. And along the same line, his team that he put together to, to do the search were phenomenal. Um, we mentioned Ann. She's not here today, but uh, she's like my second mom or third mom. Don't, don't let, she's been, uh, I asked her for one phone number about schools, and she gave me a five-page email with everyone in the district and everyone that can help our situation and, uh, and anyone that's had to make that move and our family, everyone's family special, but um, uh, for that is just a comforting, really comforting thought. Um, and then we had Brian Blair, did a great job, and Bill Stevens, he, he took a couple naps, but we're gonna let that slide. <laughs> that's a true story, <laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> He was a great, hey, he did a great job, Johnny, he did a great job driving me to the airport, so I don't want you to feel bad about it. Um, uh, and also, and then, the, then Deb Haston has been great. She's kind of, she's taken on some assistant coaches roles, but I get this thing, uh, so, but I already know, like, instantly that, uh, you know, she's married to the fire chief, and I feel like she's got this place on lock, and I can appreciate everything you've done. I know it's only been, I don't know, four or five days, so thanks, Deb. Um, now let's talk a little bit about basketball and what we're, we're going to be um, in this journey from basically three years ago I was living in Harlem and San Francisco and now it brings me to Pullman and one thing it is it's uh, I've been blessed um, and it's basketball and it's not just the game but it's what we talked about uh, building character developing relationships and this idea that always going to leave a place better than when we found it and uh, we have a process to do it and it's about empowering others to empower themselves, all right? And, uh, and I, so the process has already started here. It's already started here. I've had two practices with these guys, and they are eager. I've done this three times, and they are eager to learn. They're, they're exciting me. I, 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 think I, I think I already threw it out there after the second practice. I said, I love you guys, and I do. I come from the heart, um, and, uh, and it's just an honor to be, have guys that, uh, that look that way. Now, there'll be some rough patches, I'm sure, there always are, but just to have that start and just to have that commitment from this administration and, and have resources. I don't know, that laugh, it looks awesome. And have people that can do that, um, it's great. And uh, these two practices, at the end of the practices, just get you guys plugged in where our team is. I said, this is our origin story, man. We're gonna look, when we, when we turn this thing, we go to the NCAA tournament, it's you eight guys had a lot, lot to do with this. Everyone that walks through that door, we're gonna bring guys in, there's gonna be some other guys, you're gonna lead them and how we build this thing. 
And uh, I think it was Zay, or Isaiah Wade. He said, uh, I said, we need a name for this. And he came up with the Almighty Eight. And I said, I, said, I like it. I like it. And he, you know, he, he's a bit of, he fancies himself as a bit of a rapper or lyricist. I said, well, you start working on a, a poem or a song for us. So we need some there. But now, I, now there's one, I got to mention this. I said, now there is one guy that's on an official visit right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to reel him back in. So it might be just a Super 7. But I don't think so. Uh, it is, I'm calling him out. It's Jeff Pollard. He's going to be mad. I know it. But you are welcome here, brother. You are, you are a coog. So we want you back, and uh, I'll go biblical. Uh, the story of the prodigal son, man. Uh, you got open arms, you come back here, we got, we're all hugs, we're all love. So uh, I'd love to have them, um, and I think we will. Uh, let's hope so. But, um, and then let's talk about, I know the stories, man, they, and Kirk mentioned it, it's, uh, you know, Smith Metrics, The Matrix, uh, uh, maybe trying to, we're trying to match some with Air Raid, let's be honest. Uh, so maybe it's uh, data attack, or or we can stick with nerdball. I'm okay with nerdball, um, but that's just a tool. Um, it really helps us in our accountability and what we're trying to do as a basketball. But really, what we're about and what we'll be about is uh, um, bas- it, it's about character development, and we work through two paradigms. Uh, I've never been more confident in anything in my life. Is that these guys? They're big picture. We're going to, we're going to, and I don't care about, mon- I'll tell every parent this. We also talk about this all the time. We're going to worry more about the ones we have than the ones we don't. All right. I stole that, I think, from Don Haskins, but we're going to worry about the ones we have. So we obviously you have to recruit and you got to do that. But the, like I said, this, we're going to worry about building the program, worry about those guys. Um, and we do it with two paradigms. The first one's a big picture, and it's getting your priorities in life. All right. Faith and family, top of the chart. If you're not right there, you're not going to be right anywhere, all right? So give those guys, and I don't care. We're going to work on that. And there's two other things, and they go hand in hand. It's team. They're two full-time jobs. It's team and academics, all right? The team, you're going to be practicing 20 hours a week. You're going to be in the training room. You're going to get extra shots. Uh, you're going to have community service, team functions. It, it, it adds up. It's going to, these guys are going to be challenged to push that way. It's 40 hours. You want to be good? It's going to take that. And then academics piece, there'll be no shortcuts. Um, I just think it's right. I, I think you should value the scholarship and appreciate this thing. You're going to be in class 15 hours a week. You're going to be in study hall eight hours a week. You're going to have papers. You're going to have stuff to do. You're going to have obligations. Same deal. You add it all up, there's, bottom line, there's not much time to do anything else. Um, and and that's, that's okay with me. I'm not afraid of that. I think they demand that because we think smart and responsible win and build a great culture. And, uh, and you will... I guarantee you'll see that out of us. Um, and, uh, quite, and then the second part, the daily. And this is, you'll, guy, you'll get tired of hearing it. Guys in our program get tired of hearing it. There's three things we'll focus on every day. You're going to have a great attitude, all right? You're going to show appreciation for the scholarship, the opportunity to play basketball, college basketball, to live in Pullman, to experience this, because I've never been around a campus that has more pride in the, the undergrads and then people on the street. They're just very thankful and appreciative. So we're going we're gonna to display that. We're going to have fountains. We call them fountains. People are givers, not takers. Uh, and, and it happens. It'll, it'll happen over time. We'll have them. And then we're going to have great work ethic. Uh, we're going to have guys that absolutely, nothing gets done without work. And put the time in and grind and do it and the results will come. I feel very confident. And then lastly, maybe the most important piece is uh, Pride in your program, uh, and just and steal a nut from another coach. Is, is make the big time where you're at, and uh, feel great uh, about Pullman. And it's and it's yeah, it's challenging to get here, but once you're here, man, you're gonna fall in love with this place, and these people are gonna love you up. I know that. I've already been. I've been bowling twice. <laughs> they love me over there. Zephos loves me, um, but uh, and then just the association with. Uh, like I said, I can't believe there's only been 19 coaches, and there's been some great coaches that have come through here, dating back to Jack Friel, Marv Harshman, George Raveling, uh, Kelvin Sampson, and obviously uh, Tony Bennett, um, and there's others along the way. But though, just to mention a few, and then um, Tony and I have a couple things in common. We're, we're, you wouldn't know by our last name, but we're both Italian, and we both coach basketball. 
<laughs> Please don't hold me up. Don't, don't make me be like St. Tony. He's, a, he's another. I'm not a saint. That guy might be a saint. Um, and uh, I've already, I used it with our players and just how, what an uh, unbelievable character he has. And when one of the most shocking things happened to him last year, how he handled disappointment and now how he's handled success and just know that he coached here and, and did that. It's, don't think you guys didn't have something to do with his success. I guarantee it did. Um, so just being, being able to be associated with those coaches and then uh, to quote Bill Walton, uh, the Conference of Champions, I mean, just uh, it's pretty impressive. And to know that I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to be a coach when I was in ninth grade. And I aspired to be a high school coach and teacher. I really did because my, my high school coach, Rick Shirley, was a huge influence. He was a teacher, and I did that. And then I, I got my first assistant coaching job. I said, I'm going to get 10 years, 10 years to become a head coach. I didn't care what level. It took me 18. <laughs> it took me. And uh, I was 0 for 11 on interviews. Um, and, but I kept, I believed in what we're doing. I talked about the same thing, these numbers, these crazy met whatever. Uh, and finally, someone took a chance on me, and we were able to do that. But to be associated with the likes of Mike Montgomery, Lou Olson, Ralph Miller, and then probably maybe the greatest coach ever, John Wooden, um, I'm just humbled and honored to have a chance. And I, I thank you guys for giving this chance. And I'm I can't uh, really happy to be here. Go Cougs! Oh, oh, I got questions. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm. I thought I covered it. That was long. <laughs> Any questions? Sure. Well, you know what? It's really just creating efficiencies. Um, trying to get we just we stat everything we do, and whether it's on the court, off the court. Um, and really what it does is make you hard to beat. That's the idea. And we'll, and we'll call it dirt. Uh, defend, rebound, take care of the ball. There's no iron there. But defend, rebound, take care of the ball. And right now we have to uh, address. We were, I've already, I've hit, we, had, we confronted the brutal facts with the teams. Like we were 291 defensively. So we, we, our two practices a lot of times been dedicated to trying to get better defensively. We've got to start there. And again, you'll, you'll achieve what you emphasize. And I think if we keep pounding on it and working at it, we're going to get better. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I feel, I don't know, they're going through background checks. I don't know if I'm allowed to comment on but I feel really good about the two that are on board. And uh, they'll be, the resumes are really profound. And I'm honored to have them, but they're also, there are two people I, there's some others coming too. <laughs> two people I feel I know real well and uh, will they'll represent this community and this program. And they've had, they've had successes at this level, I want to say. One, one's won a national championship. That's the highest mountain you can achieve. Another one's been involved with some Pac-12 championships. So maybe, I don't know, not, not mention them, but you can figure it out maybe. Back there. Connections to who? To the region. Oh, like, did I run, did I forget you guys? <laughs> Hold on. I was supposed to thank my unbelievable. You're a good man. I, I should be fired. And when you mentioned, but um, I talk about thank you. I, I, I ran. It's terrible because uh, I have an unbelievable uh, family, and they're up here, and, and Pat mentioned them. But um, I'm definitely, in most parts of Eastern Washington, I'm definitely not the most famous member. Some of you might know her as the 1998 Class B, all-time single-game leading scorer, and she beat Jen Stinson. Now Jen, is it Greeny? She's back there. Where's Jen? She's back there. All right. My wife, and uh, then I'll say, there are people, some people say better half is my better three quarters. And I've scored so many points with my mother-in-law for coming back home. And uh, they're, they're, she's from uh, Lake Chelan, so we spent a lot of time on our summer up here. So, uh, and... Uh, and that, like I said, for Wenatchee to Pullman, it does. Your Pateros, Kittitas, Pasco, 
Um, it's like one small town and everyone kind of knows everyone. And uh, true story, I was on the bus one time, this bus driver was talking about the Class B championships, which I'm like, this is insane. And he mentioned he saw this girl score 50 and he talked about beat, beat out Jen Stinson. I'm like, I was assistant at St. Mary's. I said, that's my wife. <laughs> uh, shocking but true. And then my boys, uh, Rocco, uh, Bo's in school in California, and Luke being you know, in their support, and they're, 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 that's my pride and joy. Um, and this place, I grew up in Texas. People don't know that. Um, but you could run around uh, the neighborhood with your kids. We'd hop fences, you know, your neighbors, jump in pools, stuff like that. And, you know, neighbors would call over and say, hey, your, your kid's in my pool again. So I feel like it's hard to, you know, we, we've lived in some awesome places. We'll learn from it. But to have that, uh, that, that lifestyle, priceless. So, yeah, I got connections. <laughs> You know, we want to improve every day. I know it'll, I got all the cliches. I'll, I'll knock it out. But we really, in the last transition, and we make a lot of mini goals um, daily, weekly, and we use a lot of the metrics we talk about just to measure our improvement there. And uh, I don't like putting the pressure on the guys, especially early on end result wins. And like San Francisco first year, I don't know if I can guarantee this, we were the one, reason I'm hitting 291. I think San Francisco is 291 defensively. And I don't think they hired me from being a defensive guru. We went to 58, and it was this constant thing. So, and we we won way more than I ever expected. So I didn't want to that. I hope I hope we have some of the same same success. But um, I like what Kirk was talking about being patient. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, just improve. Let's let's improve day to day, year over year. That we'll definitely want to do better than. Than we did last year, but um, that may we'll we'll see we'll find out with this group. But uh, like I said, my first my first two days with them has been great, um, and uh, we'll build from there. I got I got another one, a third one today. It's, my, it's gonna be the highlight of my day. Any further questions for Kyle or President Schultz? Pat John. Uh, Randy, Randy, you All right. In well, the back, right, right, right there. Back. Oh, he's a character. <laughs> I, I got a little more leech in me than you know. I mean, I'm, I'm if you see me, I'm going to get like the Marlboro like jacket, like a leather thing with like some fur and walk around town. Just give me time. I got to get out of my New York, San Francisco stuff, but I'm a little more comfortable. But uh, I got, hey, I, any, any chance I can get, I've read Swing Your Sword, and, and, I, and he gets it. And uh, they're a big, uh, I have a quote in my office too, is the Teddy Roosevelt, where the man in the arena. And I think that's how you kind of have that attitude here and everywhere. So I will, I don't want to mess with him because I know he's in spring football. But if I ever get a chance to sit down with him, I already told him if it takes it, he can, he can do our out of bounds plays. He can <laughs> give me a whole package. I, I'm sure he wouldn't have any problem conjuring. And I'd use him, I swear. If, I, if that's what it takes to have a sit down with him, I'd love. But, uh, and uh, I'm big, we have some purple and gold in our family I'm not proud of. <laughs> not at all. But I, I'm, I'm air raid all the way. So I know Saturday night's up here. So don't, don't, always was. Don't get it twisted. Co Coach Leach is in the back, actually told him he is not calling any plays for basketball. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Yeah. And Kyle isn't calling any plays for football, so we'll make <laughs> I, it real easy. I'm not much of an X and O guy. I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs>